as I'm thinking about it, these settlers was coming to these lands, and there was being re there was being introduced to so many different cultures. Mm. Like at Around some the point, that at some point, is no way they can look at a group of people, see what they're doing, and think that this is like not like how can I put it? like they're slow or the way they're writing doesn't make sense or the way they speak it doesn't make sense because you're coming it. they don't understand any of it but they're going to so many different groups and they're getting the same results in just a different form mm -hmm. and I'm like yo you y'all y'all didn't catch on to what y'all was on I think they caught I know they caught on eventually it's like yeah these they're going to different tribes they're going to different walks of life people that been here. Mm -hmm. What's, What's good, y'all? It's the Machettes React, and we're back, back with another video. video. Who we got today, see? Today we're back with another American reaction. Super excited about this video. If you're new to us and, and we new to you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 200k. And we cannot get there without you guys. All right, join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. <laughs> dance of a noble people. Haka is again an identity of Maori. There are many Why different types of haka. Uh, there's, there's the expressive haka which... I see that but they all just went different ways as if it was the community just got together and suddenly and just made a haka Maybe. real quick. Oh <laughs> culture bro. People know what they're doing when they come together. Um, which displays anger. Anger about the subject that we're doing the haka about. There's also uh, other haka which talk about the histories of the land, histories of different ancestors, battles of different ancestors, uh, and haka, haka is an expressive, it's an expressive way for Māori to be able to tell their story, tell their story and, and let it all out. All black. Haka today has become a brand almost. Before it, it only identified to Māori, but now it identifies to New Zealand. is that you can design it specifically so that it suits you and where you are and through a massive brand like the All Blacks other teams have picked it up and then you know schools and kindergartens and what that's led on to is a learning of the language yeah one or two words at a time and now most people would be able to translate the haka word for word and they might know another haka or their school haka that right there, that is how you continue to keep a culture alive. They are learning indigenous words. In kindergarten. In kindergarten. In kindergarten. That's how you keep culture alive, right there. That's the best way to go about they it. They thinking they're just learning something that's fun, but it's some look me doing movements. Go ahead now. But they're learning they're learning things that is about their culture. Yeah. And again, each one, like, the, the way they, you know, demonstrate it tells a story. Mm -hmm. So they're retelling themselves something over and over again in right. a way that is expressive to the community. And it's a very vibrant, vibrant thing. So it's like, yeah, yeah. that's hard, Because bro. so many times you hear of a language that has died out. 
people yeah. talk about how not many people know about this mm -hmm. because they don't find creative ways to teach the young who's going to continue to teach their young and it's going to keep going. It's kindergarten, like, bro. Yes. And that's more learning that goes with it. And so because of the beauty of haka and everybody wanting to be a part of it, I think that has helped to integrate it into New Zealand society. So the haka to me, it means a part of my cultural identity. It is a part of my customs, my traditions, and it was uh, an important ceremonial dance that was passed down from my ancestors, and we still practice it today. <laughs> This is what I love. I love being able to show my culture off to the world. It's the only job in, in the world where you get to poke your tongue out at your customers and you get paid for it. <laughs> and yet it's a good so reason to do it, right? Very, very proud actually to be able to show our culture to the world and people like yourself embrace it. Yeah. They embrace embrace our, country, our culture and they love Sorry. it. And do you think you can do this like your entire life? I'll keep on doing it as long as I can, as long as I can stamp my feet and do the haka, I'll keep doing it. This is the Waitangi Treaty Grounds, New Zealand's most historic place. This is where on the 6th of February 1840, a treaty document was uh, signed between the Māori people, my ancestors, and the British representatives. We were the minority when these brash young European or British sailors were coming in after spending years out, of, out on sea and then coming, in, coming into our countries. They mistreated our people, they mistreated our women, they mistreated our, our children, they murdered our men, they murdered our, our, our kids for no reason, no reason whatsoever other than they, they, had, they felt that they had the superiority over, over us. We fought to the bitter end and it, it was because of the... It was interesting, not a, I, and I always have these crazy random thoughts. No thought is crazy. Well, it's not crazy, but you know, as I'm thinking about it, these settlers was coming to these lands and there was being re there was being introduced to so many different cultures. Mm. Like at Around some the point that at some point is no way they can look at a group of people, see what they're doing, and think that this is like not like how can I put it? like they're slow or the way they're writing doesn't make sense or the way they speak it doesn't make sense. Because you're coming understand. they don't understand any of it. But they're going to so many different groups and they're getting the same results in just a different form. Mm hmm and I'm like, yo, y'all you, didn't catch on to what y'all was doing? I think they caught, I know they caught on eventually. It's like, yeah, these they going to different tribes. They're going to different walks of life. People that have been here. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. They knew that, bro. I'm going to keep my comments on that. Vision of our many prophets, our many visionaries that we had pre-1840 that foresaw this happening was the very reason that uh, they wanted this treaty document. This treaty document came about as a request from Māori so that we were able to move forward as one people, as one nation. Tāmoko is, it's an identity print of our people. It tells the history, the genealogies, and the stories of you as an individual who wears the tāmoko. In short, it is a tattoo, mm -hmm. but it tells your whole story because 
prior to the pen and paper, our body was the paper, the ink was uh, the pen. The reason the old people had muku was to identify who they yeah, were. Right there. This That's is hard. why I like tattoos. That's hard. A lot of people don't like tattoos and, and they say things that they really don't know what they're talking about. Nah, they don't. the Bible. They and I be like, listen, this is my story. This is my temple. And I don't want to get spiritual with people. You I'm not, I'm not going to do it, but I love... I love my tattoos because they tell the story of me. Yeah, they do. I'm about to ask questions, but don't mind it. It do, bro. And um, no. <laughs> it's just that you know, um, we had watched a video like this a while back, similar to it, and this gentleman was giving tattoos to the people in that Hawaii. in Hawaii, and he was expressing that he don't just give it to anybody. You literally got to go through something so you can earn your stripes. Mm -hmm. In that sense, you know what I'm saying, and. It's just it's beautiful. Like this is a culture where you have to get inked up. Mm -hmm. You have to. It's like you can't wake up one day and just be like, you know, I'm not going. But then again, you probably can. But yeah. at some point, it's like if you want to, it's a requirement to do. Yeah, and it's a part of their culture. It is. Yeah. You know, so that's why when people like try to condemn people who have tattoos, I'm like, you don't know the real you, then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. But I feel yes. that tattoos tell a story. That's why. When people who are young who try to go get a tattoo, oh, I like the way that look. No, wait until you're older to make that decision. Yeah, because 100%. that's something that's on yeah, your body that, that yeah, you can yeah. get off, but it's not 100% gonna be off. You know, so mm -hmm. I like tattoos. It was to also identify what they did, where they their standing in their tribe was, um, status, you know, things like that. And that's what it's still about. And it's still about identity. The main part of it is all about identity. The, the client will come in, we'll, we'll have a conversation, and from that conversation, and then look into our, you know, in our mind, because in our mind we have all the designs, um, and then we utilize the right design to get that story sort of understood on the skin. We do not um, draw the design before the client comes. Um, for us, it's best that it comes directly after the conversation, because that's when you're at your freshest. Um, that's what makes it so unique, um, like today. I had an idea in mind, but then as soon as I saw her back, it changed just like that. And it really? looks totally different to what I was going to initially do. Yeah. In the old days, they utilised the, the bone chisel. Um, the chisel was actually, you know, yeah, no, that's what I was tapped on the face to split the skin, like cut the skin. And if we take a look behind me, on this photograph here, this is a, one of our, our Māori kings, his name was um, Tafio. And if you can see, like, the incisions were made on the skin. So you can actually see it was cut. Yes, Whereas on my face, the lines are like drawn, eh? Like a yeah. scar. Yeah. Yeah. But these guys did it the hard way. Mm. And you see, they don't they have any tattoos, you see what I'm saying? British wanted Māori to uh, cede all of our rights like and our sovereignty and okay so that's a question that we can drop yeah i forgot yeah. it was another group in the polynesian <laughs> culture that we was reacting to and they have the tattoos on their their thighs mm -hmm. so of course I'm, I'm guessing that people can choose not to have it if they don't want it and i, I think yeah that's what i was speaking about earlier and i mean yeah. it's it's event like it's culture, so it's kind of like required to you mm -hmm. to get it, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Okay. That's how I yeah. look at it. Yeah. Let us know in the comment section yeah. how, you know what I'm saying, is it required to get it, like you have to get it eventually, or you have a choice to never, you know, get inked up. Right. Ownership over to the British. Henry Williams, who translated the document from English into the native tongue, Te Reo Māori, knew full well that Māori would never ever agree to those terms as set out in the English document. He translated it in a way whereby Māori would understand and whereby Māori would agree to the terms as set out in the Māori document. From 1840 to today, in fact, it has always been a contentious point of discussion. We arrived here from the Pacific, and in the Pacific they practiced 
tato or tattooing. Um, so we would have brought those skills here. And then we, our designs changed as we arrived here because of our environment. So the design of my tattoo is based on my iwi, so um, the, the awa, so the Wanganui awa, and the design is like the ropes, uh, the ties coming into the rope that tie all the different iwi down the river together. Beautiful. Yeah. So did you know when you came in here this morning how it would look like? or Not exactly, no. I gave him free, free will to do what he wanted to do, yeah. I trust in his design. And you're very happy with it. Yeah, I love yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So you're you're Maori as well. Yes. Are yes. you 100 percent How does it work? Do you um, I'm not sure on percentages, but my whaka papa tells the story. So um, I my mother is Pakeha um, or English, and my father is Maori, and through him um, we go up. So yeah, um, our um, Te Atiawa, Te Whare Toa, and uh, Te Ati Haunui, a paparangi uh, iwi. Okay, yeah. cool. Mm. So not everyone can get a tattoo as you have because you're part of the mm -hmm. tribe. So it's not. Can I get a similar tattoo? You like you can get similar tattoo to my understanding, um, but it's called Kuritahi, I think. So it's it's yeah. the same sort of design and things, but um, not with the fucker but your own your own story. Yeah. You gotta have your own story. See, that's why you can't be mimicking other folk, man. You gotta have your own People story. People that are outside of my tribe, they'll just see me as a mukord face. But my tribe knows what it means because I've explained it to them. And right. It's about my guardian, it's about a spiritual guardian, because we're big believers on that stuff, um, that we have tribal spiritual guardians, and that's what mine represents. <laughs> okay, so I do want to say something. I remember being young. I don't know if it was a Disney movie. It had to be something along those lines. Uh -oh. um, and I didn't know much about New Zealand, but I knew about the Maori culture from that. I just didn't know it was the Maori culture. Lilo so and like, Stitch? Maybe so. Lilo and they, Stitch? They Hawaii. So maybe it's not Maori. Maybe it's just Polynesian culture. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But I remember like the tattoo that he had. Like I remember people having that. And that's why like you it's important for children to watch these shows but it's important to monitor what's on these shows mm -hmm. you know because yeah. something like that it just it made me think of that and like wow i do remember that just didn't yeah. know the name back then we're not we're not 100 percent educated on what we'd be seeing yeah. half the time it's just this play you know what i'm saying so yeah. it comes with it boy y'all got some views out there though hey y'all got some is views. Out everything and when I talk nature, I talk the whenua, the lands, I talk the rako, the trees, the ngahire, the forests, I talk the moana, I talk everything within the moana. That is our nature, that is our world. Everything has a life force, everything has a heartbeat to Māori, and we treat it with such respect. And that is our cultural upbringing, that is our upbringing, and it's a part of our tikanga, our practices of we as Māori. Uh, to be respectful to everything around us. Swimming in our awa or our river, um, knowing that we're swimming in the ancestral waters that our ancestors also swam in. Wairua, that spirituality of our ancestor, also cleanses us. It cleanses us physically, it cleanses us mentally, and it also cleanses us uh, spiritually. Sounds stress-free to me. <laughs> Yes, Te reo is the language simply translated. It's the language of our people. If our language dies, our people die. Our culture dies. Without language, we don't have an identity, I believe. You know, everybody has an identity as a Kiwi with the English language because that's what we're known for apart from haka. But as Māori within our own country, we need that. Te reo goes way back to Hawaii. Te reo was kept alive through the traditional types of songs that we sang, haka. Um, uh, we told our stories and histories and genealogies through our whakaero, through our carvings and our meeting houses. And so that's how we, we communicated with one another. Uh, it was our missionary brothers and sisters that come over, you know, from Great Britain, from Europe, and started to record the language on paper. Through the diligence of people like Williams and uh, other dictionary writers, hopefully with the help of, of Māori, that they recorded as many words as they could, and that's how it became a, 
a written language. And they use the alphabet of the English language to write the Maori language. That's correct, yes. Okay. My grandparents were a part of that forbidden generation uh, that weren't allowed to speak, to speak the language. And that came down to ignorance from the non-Māori that were around at the time who felt that, uh, felt threatened by the language because they couldn't understand what our people were saying. They tried to outlaw, in fact they did, they passed a law that um, forbid Māori to speak their native tongue. True. And if they did speak the native tongue, they were strapped for speaking the language. Because of that ignorance, it caused the whole language to miss an entire generation, which was my... Mm. Wow, his generation. Are... I'm not going to finish his words, my bad. Yeah. But um, language, words are powerful. They are. And we see countless times throughout history, they use, they weaponize words and the ability to read to, and write from people who they wanted to suppress. Yeah, man. Words are powerful, man. That's why you got to take the answer with a grain of salt, because what they say is bad may not be as bad. Mm. Because you got to remember, they strip you from it to yeah. tell you it was wrong for you to do at one point. Yeah. And now when things start to come into society, like with 2023, if you see something happening and they, you, you, you've been taught for so long that that's not right, that is negative, then you're not going to never know a piece of history. You know what right. I'm saying? Because it's like you don't know where that comes from. You're just going right. off what someone said. That's just negative. Right. Investigate on your own. You got to. Parents' generation. But in the past, you know, I'd say past 20 years, a lot of work has been done to revive the real. Uh, we've got universities now providing Māori language uh, courses to help with the revival of te reo Māori. Where uh, things Māori were pushed down then, now they're re-emerging, but they're re-emerging with not only help, they're re-emerging with funding and they're re-emerging yeah. with love because our politicians can look back and say, okay, that was wrong, we can't fix it from then, but what can we do for now? to help and enhance this person's educational experience and to help them get on their way and to learn what they need to learn. Yeah. You know, the acceptance of te reo Māori um, is, is starting to broaden, starting to widen around our country and that's very, very encouraging, I think. It's good to hear that. right here this is the end of it interesting man at the end of the day no one is perfect we all got a lot of digging to do within ourselves to mm -hmm. identify who we are and i feel like once we start to slowly do that we find out that we have so much more things that will work mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying we handle ourselves different we care mm -hmm. about ourselves a lot more you know what i'm saying we're not right. just loose and just doing whatever works right. we're actually doing things that is meaningful to ourselves mm -hmm. i definitely agree i yeah. feel like it's the Maori um called, ugh. Excuse me. The Maori culture, I feel like, has more eyes on it than a lot of cultures. Can I actually say? Yeah, nah. I'll say it's one of the top five. Okay. You know, because of the sports, they incorporated in their sports around yeah, the world. Yeah, you got a part, and, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. everybody needs to know a little bit about the Maori. And I feel like everybody feels the same thing when they hear the Maori. Yeah. Even if they're not a part of that culture. Like, you, you feel some type of emotion. You don't know the words. You don't know what they're saying. But you feel but, something. But you feel they it. make you feel it. <laughs> yeah. So, this was a good documentary. We hope you guys enjoyed it with us. Like this video. Subscribe. Turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks if you like to support the channel that way. As well as our reaction request form is in our description, description box, box below. below. We'll see you soon. Peace. Peace.